Father Patrick Payton, CSC, had just been ordained and finished his studies. The Congregation of Holy Cross, his religious community, sent him to be a chaplain at the Holy Cross Brothers School in Albany, New York. There, Father Payton pursued his dream to unite families in prayer, especially the Rosary. With the help of local clergy, religious, and even students from local Catholic schools, he reached out to bishops all over the United States. He received enthusiastic responses, but how could he reach out to the average family? He soon realized that the best way to reach the largest number of people was through radio. A local Catholic college donated their time on WBHY in Albany to Father Payton. He used this time to broadcast his first rosary programs. His idea was to invite local families to pray the rosary on air with him as a model that other families could follow. The local station was skeptical about the plan. They told him the rosary is bad radio. The overwhelmingly positive audience response proved those critics were wrong. With this success in Albany, Father Payton wanted to take his program to a national audience. He appealed to the great orator, Fulton Sheen, still Monsignor at the time, but already a popular radio star. Sheen supported Father Payton's idea of a campaign to promote the family rosary, and the two of them came up with a plan. In 1945, during Lent, Sheen invited his radio audience to write in for a free rosary and a family rosary instructional booklet, both of which would be provided by Father Payton. Sheen told Payton to be ready for upwards of 10,000 responses. Within two weeks, they received 56,000 requests from all over the United States, and not just from Catholics, but from other Christian denominations and faith traditions as well. Father Payton and his crew of Albany volunteers were elated. More than ever, Father Payton wanted a national radio show of his own, and he began praying for the help of the Blessed Mother and appealing to his widening circle of friends and fans. His first radio program was over a local station in Albany, New York. And on Mother's Day, 1945, Father Payton's message went out on the first nationwide family rosary broadcast. Mutual's Radio Chapel. Today it is fitting that we as a nation give thanks to Almighty God who has strengthened us and given us a victory. That was said by President Truman who proclaimed today, Mother's Day, as a day of prayer for the people of the United States, whatever their faith, to unite in offering joyful thanks to God for the victory we have won and to pray that he will support us to the end of our present struggle and guide us into the way of peace. The President called upon us to dedicate this day of prayer to the memory of those who have given their lives make possible our victory. In the spirit of this day, it is our privilege to present the recitation of the family rosary. Our speaker will be His Excellency, the Most Reverend Francis J. Spellman, Archbishop of New York and military vicar for the armed forces of the United States. The Sullivan family will recite the family rosary together with students of the College of St. Rose. And from Hollywood, Bing Crosby will speak to you on the importance of family prayer. And it was planned to be a prayer for peace on Mother's Day, but the war in Europe ended just before May the 13th, so it ended up being a prayer of thanksgiving for peace in Europe. And Father Payton had a contact with the Mutual Broadcast System, and they asked him to invite a prominent family. So the Sullivan brothers died on the same ship during World War II. In Washington, sorrow and pride for Mrs. Thomas Sullivan and her husband, parents of five boys, who were all killed in action on the cruiser Juno. Rear Admiral Woodward turns over to them five Purple Heart medals, symbols of the supreme sacrifice of George Francis Joseph Madison and Albert Sullivan. Their parents came on the radio program to pray the rosary with Father Payton. They said, that's fine, but it would be great if you had a celebrity. So he said, well, who's the biggest celebrity in Hollywood today? And they said, well, Bing Crosby, but you'll never get him. So he called Bing Crosby. It's a cold call. He, he got him on the phone providentially. And Bing Crosby, once Father Payton explained what he was doing, said, oh, I'll be glad to be on the program. Then beyond Bing Crosby, he also had Archbishop Spellman of New York, later Cardinal Spellman, and President Roosevelt had just died, so 
the new president, Harry Truman, also endorsed the program. Later, Elsie Dick, the person in charge of religious programming for Mutual Radio, boasted that Father Payton's 1945 broadcast was the best she had ever produced. Father Payton and his supporters in Albany were thrilled and wanted to build on the success of that first program. They attempted to get additional shows on the air in New York, but were met with only more obstacles. It became clear that Father Payton would need to go to Hollywood to pursue his quest of using mass media to reach families with his message of unity through prayer. <laughs> 